Okay, if you're one of those people who are trying to stretch out your hamstring, but you really struggle, and you don't really get your hamstring stretched out, you feel like it's the back of the knee, then it could be that you've got a higher neural tension component than a hamstring component. Now what I mean by that is, when you try and straighten your knee, if you try and reach forward like that, and you can't even touch your toes, it may not be the fact that you've got tight hamstrings. It is more likely, and especially if you feel it down the back of your calf and the back of your knee, that you've got neural tension. That's more of a problem than the hamstring. So if you want to stretch your hamstrings, I've got four different ways of doing that that take out the sciatic nerve component and get you probably stretching your hamstrings out. Because maybe you want to stretch your hamstrings for a flexibility thing, maybe it's because you've been training your hamstrings and they feel very tight. But regardless, it does help with your whole movement going forward and being able to touch your toes. Of course, you've got to address the sciatic nerve component, but today we're going to work on the hamstring component. So think of when you are in this position, you're trying to touch there. If your sciatic nerve is very tight, that'll be going first. You'll feel that at the back of the knee and down in the calf. Now, some people just go, well, okay, I've got to bend my knee and grab this way. But then they go, now I don't feel my hamstring anymore. Okay, I, still can't, I don't feel that, but I still don't feel my hamstring. Usually that's because you're in that flex position in your lower back. Now to stretch your hamstring, like if you're flexed in your lower back, the attachment point of your hamstrings, the usual tuberosity, right? That's actually forward. So if you stay in a flex position, it's pretty hard to stretch your hamstring out, okay? So you need to be in a arch lower back. Now it's extremely difficult for most people who've got tight legs to be in an arch lower back when they are on the ground in this position when they're well forward and that knee is out here. So I suggest you get off the floor from that position and start doing it differently. First one, now I've got two sort of favorites. First one is actually up on a bench. Now, so you're doing it standing, but this could be a sofa, it could be your bed at home, but you put one foot up on the bench. Now the trick is, when you've got a sliding nerve tension, you've got to take two things out of the equation. You've got to take the knee into flexion, and you've got to put your foot or your ankle into plantar flexion. So you don't want to be knee extended and toes towards your dorsal. You don't want to be in that position, because if, if you're one of those people who've got sciatic nerve tension, and then you do this, you go, ah, oh, I can feel it here again. So plantar flex the foot, bend the knee. Now, that's taking out that leg, that, that nerve component. To get this stretched out, what you've got to do is go into at least a neutral spine in your lower back. So you don't want to be flexed forward, you want to be upright and neutral and have this in neutral or extended in that position. If you start from that position, you'll probably start feeling it already just being in that position. What you then want to try and do is maintain a straight back and bend forward to the hips. Now what that's going to do, if you keep your back locked, you might have to use a bit of core for this, but your pelvis will rotate that way. Now we talked about the issue of tuberosity going backwards and therefore that will lengthen out the hamstring as in that'll stretch it. If I rotate my pelvis that way, think about pushing my pelvis back and rotating that way, I will then immediately feel a hamstring stretch there. I don't get the back of the knee and I don't get the calf because I've taken that stuff out. So I'm just stretching from the hamstring tendon right through the belly to the tuberosity at that point. Now you can play around with this, you can change your angles to get like which part of that hamstring do you want more or less, okay? So you can actually sort of bend, maybe it's more knee flexion, more going forward, okay? Or it's less knee flexion, that sort of thing. So have a play around with it, but that's a really nice way of doing it. Now, if you don't have something like that, maybe you're out in the park or you're out running and that sort of thing, and you've only got a floor and you don't have anything to put your foot up on, or maybe you just want to be on the floor and in a more stable position because you don't like standing. So you can go down into a kneeling position. So same, pretty much the exact same position. Put that leg out into, so if I'm like that, you can see it's already in plantar flexion. So that's dorsiflexion. So you just go, okay, from there, bang. Okay, that takes out the calf. You don't want to have a straight knee, you have a bent knee. Same drill as the standing. You just got to think, okay, I want to lengthen the back by sort of sticking my bum back, keeping my back straight. So that bony point, the bum bone, that is tuberosity, has to go backwards, like rotating that way. And if you can think about driving it backwards and coming forward and keeping a straight back, bang, you immediately feel it. You can do the same things with this. Some people like going forward and really getting stuck in. If I do that, I feel way more. 
but for some people they can't even get to the floor or they end up rounding the back and they get less. So you've got to be able to maintain a neutral spine here and sort of sit back there if you're going to come forward in that position. All right? Some people don't have the flexibility, so they might just lean on the pole. You might have a bench there to hold on to and stay in that position. Okay? So that's a really good option for those of you who you know, don't have less equipment or they're out and about and they need to do a hamstring stretch and take it in your component. So if you uh, want to go one step further and just be completely relaxed, or you feel like that this is a little bit too difficult and you want to just rest while you're doing a stretch, you can do it up against the wall. Now this is probably not my absolute favorite, but some people really like this and it's really effective for them. So what you need, if you're in the gym, you might need a pole like this. If you're at home, maybe it's the sort of edge of a door frame. So if you imagine, this was the open door, this would be the door frame. I can go right up to that, maybe not too far up, but pretty close enough. Get your leg that you want to stretch up onto the edge of the door, okay? Same drill, bent knee, right? So you're not going to try and straighten your knee like that. Bent knee, plantar flex your foot. Now at that point, there's a little bit of tension going here. It's not as much as that kneeling one, but what I want to aim for is arching my lower back. Now this might be quite good, for those people who did struggle with trying to arch their back or get even get into neutral when they were in that kneeling position. Maybe they're so tight, just they can't even get into neutral and it doesn't work for them. So what you can do now is if, if you imagine like if I bend my knee up, I'm in flexion, so there's no stretch here. As I put this leg down, I get more and more and more and more here because what this leg is doing is it's pulling tension on the pelvis this way, slowly rotating me. So the longer I get here, the more I'm getting here. Now, admittedly, this is not as much stretch here than I get on that one, okay? But it does mean I can just completely relax and I don't have to worry about it. This one I can hold for a long period of time. So if you don't mind a mild stretch and you want to hold it for a long period of time, this is probably the go for you. Now, if you don't have a wall, what do you do? What you need is something like a power band. So what I would use is something like a quite a thick power band you can also use a stretch band, which is a little bit sort of tough, a little bit different, but a power band will mean that you can sort of, that can be your wall, it can hold your leg up. So what you do is put that around the back of your, of your foot, make sure it's your heel, not your toe. And the reason for that is, if you go on your toe, you're gonna to pull it into dorsiflexion, we don't want that. We wanna go into plantar flexion, so it goes on the back of the heel. And then as you, Lie down, keep your knee bent, keep yourself into plantar flexion, knee bent, and then what you can do is play around and just hold that band as much as you like, and then drop that leg straight. And the good thing about this is perhaps over the wall, is you can sort of bend or straighten your knee and just change positions left and right, okay? So you can angle different parts of the hamstring, and you can move your knee forward and back to get the perfect stretch that you want. It does require you to hold on a little bit, Okay, but it is a good one, but just make sure that it doesn't slip off when you go into plantar flexion like that. Okay, so this is quite a nice one to do as well. If you find it's, the band is too hard to hold onto, just put it around your back like that. And so when you lie down, you can just put your foot up in that position there. Now sometimes it doesn't sort of hold too well, you might have to sort of just put your hands in the back of the hamstring and just rest there. But again, you can play around with that a little bit more and just keep it in that position. Okay, so those are my sort of four different exercises, if you like. If you're one of those people that are struggling with trying to get your hamstring stretched out because you do have so much neural tension there, one, I'd probably get the neural tension thing addressed, but two, start working on bending your knee, plantar flexing your foot, and try different positions and see which one works for you. See you next time.